Hey everyone, thanks to Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm looking at a brand new game on Kickstarter called Desolated. This is a new one from Antithesis Games. It is a one to six player game that takes roughly 30 to 60 minutes to play, and is a competitive game where each of the players is competing against the other players to gain material cards and build their engine, which they'll use to buy Archime cards, which in turn will also be used to purchase landmark cards. And the first player to buy three landmark cards will trigger the end of the game, and that points the players will continue until all players have had an equal number of turns and at the end of that round the players will total up their points and the one that has the most will be the winner of the game. So in this video I'll be covering the main features of the game and showing you a sample round in action to show you how the game plays. If you're interested in checking a full playthrough video I'll have a link up to the top corner where I'll play through the first middle and end couple rounds to show you how the game plays and progresses to help you decide whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay updated on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll show you what this one's all about. The first deck of cards I want to look at are the material cards, as this is going to make up the majority of the cards that are included in the base game. Each of these cards is going to have a resource in the top corner, and there are six different resources included in the base game. Underneath that, each card is going to have two icons on either end of the card, and these will be used when placed out onto your play area. You can link them up as long as the icon on the card that you're placing matches an icon on a card that's already out there. For example, if I had these two cards, I can place them out and link them up as their icons are the same on the sides. That will create an engine in my play area that I can take advantage of, as all of the effects on the engine are always passive, so I can trigger them throughout my turn to gain the resources from them. And I'll go into more detail about this later. The second deck of cards are the Archime cards. Each of these cards is going to have a number of victory points in the top corner, if the player still has it, at the end of the game. And then you'll have the icons that this card can be used to purchase landmark cards with those icons. And then finally, you have the cost of the Archime card. And so during the player's turn, they're going to choose to purchase one of these by spending material cards with those icons on that or converting materials using their engines that they can use as well. So for example, with this one here, we need these three icons. So I could spend these three cards here to gain this card and add it to my area. Alternatively, if say I only had two of these and I had an engine that would be able to build the third, I can trigger that by spending cards on my area. And again, I will show you this more later on in the video. The final deck of cards are the landmark cards. And these are the cards that the players are going to be working throughout the game to purchase. And when a player purchases the third landmark card, that will trigger the end of the game. And the players will total up their points at the end of the turn. And whoever has the most will be the winner. Each of these cards is going to have a number of victory points that it's worth at the end of the game. And then each of the cards is going to have an effect that the player can carry out at certain points during their turn. Finally, each card is going to have a number of icons that you'll have to spend on the Archime cards to purchase. So for example, let's go ahead and say that our player had these two Archime cards. We have the little triangle and a tower and the little person. So they could choose to discard these cards to purchase this card as it has those two icons that are listed, the person and the tower. Or we also have all three of these icons on there, so we could choose to discard these to gain this card instead. So the final thing I want to show you is a sample round in action to give you an idea how the game plays. And I also want to break down the rules a little bit more so you understand how the game works. So from there, you're going to move into choosing a starting player, and you can do this in any manner you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and select this player over here. Then each player's turn is broken down into three phases, the draw phase, action phase, and status phase. And these are done in order and completed by one player before it moves on to the next. So I'm going to go ahead and start again with this player during their draw phase. So I'm, normally you do not reveal these, but I'm going to go ahead and reveal this player's cards so you can kind of see what this player has. From there, the player is going to draw two cards from the material draw pile or the material deck or a combination of. And the player is going to start generating some sort of strategy, whether it is to start working on building an engine or to be able to purchase those Archime cards. And the player does notice that this Archime card doesn't have terribly hard requirements, and he already has two of those requirements that he needs and an additional one here with this crystal. He would just need one more in order to purchase that. So he's going to go ahead and start off by drawing this card here and adding it to his hand. And then he'll go ahead and do a blind draw from the deck. And it was not the card that he needed. 
So from there, then it's going to move into the action phase. And during the action phase, the player can only choose to perform one action from a selection of five different actions, which is to upgrade, trade, earn, harvest, or pass. And I'm going to briefly touch on each one of these. So the first one is an upgrade, which will allow you to play a card from your hand down into your area to either add to an existing engine or to start a new engine. So let's go ahead and say, for example, my player wanted to build this card here to start building an engine. And then later on during his next turn, let's go ahead and say that he played this one as they both have that same icon that lines up so that he could connect this engine together. The next type of action is a trade action. This is going to allow the player to spend cards from their hand to purchase an Archime card. Now, if the player has engines out, they can also spend cards from their hand to pay the resources to activate that engine. So again, let's go ahead and say that this player had played a couple turns and had this out there. So at that point, that player, let's say, had this resource here. He could choose to pay this resource to trigger this engine, which would convert that resource over to two of these resources here. Then he could spend one of those to activate this ability as well, gaining two of the crystals here, and then he'd have one remaining to be able to use to purchase an Archime card that is up there. Again, you can also use resources from your hand to complete that transaction. The next one is to earn. So that one, again, would be if once you have Archime cards, you would spend those cards to purchase a land card. The fourth action is a harvest, which would allow you to draw another card from the main deck of material cards. So if you really needed another material that was out there, then you could go ahead and draw that up. And the final one is to pass. If you cannot or choose not to perform an action during the action phase, you can choose to pass and not do anything else. From there, then the final phase in a player's turn is the status phase. During this phase, the player is going to go ahead and fill up all of the areas that were missing cards from where the player purchased. And if the player has any land cards out that allow them to store a card, they can choose to do one store action during the status phase. From there, then it'll pass on to the next player if the game has not come to an end due to three lands being out and all the players have an equal number of turns. So from here, then I'm going to go ahead and move over to the next player to go and show you another sample turn. So again, this player is going to reveal and they have a couple of different crystals already looking pretty good. So again, this player is going to go ahead and do a draw. And I have, I'm going to go ahead and take this one here and I will take this one here. Okay, so then I, during my action phase, I'm going to choose to play a card. And I will play, I'm going to go ahead and choose to play this one here into my area. From there, then during my status phase, I'll go ahead and refill these cards here. And it'll move over to the next player. So again, this player is going to again draw up. And now I can go after that other card if I want to. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take this one here. And I'll do a draw from the deck. And then during my action phase, I'm going to go ahead and spend those resources. So I have the three there and this one here. So these will all be discarded and I will gain that Archime card that it will be pl placed in front of my area. Then again, my status phase, I can't do anything during my status phase, so I will refill. And again, it'll move back over to the other player to go. So that player is going to draw. And the other important thing I want to point out is at the end of your turn during your status phase, you're also going to make sure that you only have seven cards in your hand. If you have more than that, you have to discard down to seven cards. So with this player, that they're going to go ahead and draw. And I will take, I'm going to take two, I'm going to take this one here. And I'll take one from here. Then during my action phase, again, I'm going to play to continue building that engine that I have started. And that is my turn for that player. So again, I'll refill. And I think I'm still good. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm okay with my hand size. And again, this is going to continue going back and forth. As the players progress, they're going to again buy those Archime cards. And then once they get an Archime card that they 
can use to purchase a location. Let's go ahead and say that, for example, this player later on was able to purchase this one here. Then during the next turn, that player can choose to spend that archive if they want to, to purchase one of the land cards at the top there. So let's say that they spent this, so it would be discarded, and it has all four icons on it, so I could use it to purchase any land up here. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase, I'm going to go and purchase this location here. So this will be added to my play area. And then again, during my the status phase, now this has a thing that I can store a card in. So it allows me to store a spectral card. So I have one, so I'll be able to place that behind that land. And then it's going to get me additional victory points at the end of the game. Now, another important thing to note is that on the reference card, it does break down the, the number of each one of the resources on all of the different material cards that are included. So you understand the breakdown. So as players start packing cards behind or storing cards behind their lands, those resources are going to become harder and harder to get from the material cards. You'll have to gain them from your engine if you're able to. So definitely plan ahead as you move forward throughout the game. Finally, once the person purchases the third lands, then each player will continue playing until all players have an equal number of turns. At the end of that round, all the points are going to be totaled up from any lands that the player has, any bonuses from the cards stored under those lands, and if the player had any Archime cards that he had not spent yet, he'll also receive points for those. And the player has the most points, it'll be the overall winner of the game. So I hope you found that video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.